Homestead. Um, <clears throat> I've got a couple of recipes I just want to upload as part of Meatless Monday Challenge, um, which I'm going to be participating in with Miss Laurie from Whippoorwill Holler. And my husband and I have both been enjoying quite a few vegetarian meals lately. I used to be a vegetarian about probably nearly 20 years ago. For three years, didn't eat any fish or chicken or meat of any kind. So I've got um, quite a few recipes from back in those days that I used to use and a few new ones as well. So I hope you'll enjoy these two recipes I'm going to upload. See you soon. Bye for now. This is my recipe. It's pretty simple. Um, so let's get started. Okay, so first up you just need to get your courgettes, just give them a wee wash. I've got these, just pick them from the garden. And then I'm just going to grate them. So once you've grated them all, they're going into this bowl and then we're going to cover it with about two teaspoons of salt, mix it through and then just let them sit for about, um, I think it's minutes. Oh, it says five minutes. I normally leave it about ten minutes. And then just squeeze all that excess liquid out. I normally always just do this by hand. I know you can just do it with your food processor or something, but I quite like to do things just the old-fashioned way. But that's just sort of what I'm like. I can use my gadgets when I want to, but it's a lot easier also to wash a grater than it is all the different compartments of a food processor. So we've got a... Um, in our area where we live we have something called it's I think it's called free Sunday so if you've got anything at your house that you don't want um, you can just put it out in this free Sunday and then anybody can come along and just take it and quite a lot of people just drive around and get things I think we used to do it years ago when the kids were little and you'd get all sorts of things but these days we are more inclined to want to get rid of stuff than wanting to bring anything more into the house. So we've got it, some things out there. There's an old bike and some old chairs that were a bit broken. We didn't want to repair them or we didn't want them anymore. And um, an old hiking pack. So Bruce, my husband's just going out there to see what's remaining. And if anybody's taken it, we're hoping they've taken everything. <laughs> Yep, so once we've um, grated it all, we'll just sprinkle over the salt and then we'll, I'll be back again. So just sprinkle, sprinkle your salt over and then just, I just mix it, mix it through a little bit and then just leave it uncovered, probably about 10 minutes, just set the timer and by then there should be quite a lot of liquid coming out of it and then you want to make sure you squeeze all of that liquid out. My husband's reading to me while I'm cooking dinner. He's reading a very old book. You want to bring it and show them, babe, what the book is? The Swiss Family Robinson. Our son gave it to us for Christmas. We all loved the movie years ago. And this is the story from which the um, movie came about. So he reads that. He likes to read to me. We read all kinds of different things. Christian biographies and all sorts of things. So we've, we've got through a huge amount of books over the years. So now we're just going to carry on with this. So we're going to chop up some red onion. And I'm going to finally chop up some basil. And um, once I've drained all of the zucchini, I'll add that into the mix. The floor of our chamber was covered by a thick bed of clay, over which was placed a quantity of small pebbles, very closely and evenly together. The plaster with which we had covered our walls, I calculated, would be properly dried by the end of the summer. With the glue was again gone through, as was also the beating which was this time long and vigorous. So now I'm just going to um, strain all the liquid out of the zucchini. So you can see if, if I just press it, there's quite a lot of liquid and it's just running off. So I'll just pop it into the 
sieve and then just try and squish as much of that liquid out as I can. So you want it to be fairly dry. Okay, so now we're just going to add in half a cup of flour, just four pieces of flour, you can use wholemeal if you want, and that's probably half a red onion finely diced, and um, probably about one and a half tablespoons of finely chopped fresh basil. I, you can use parsley or any fresh herbs, but I especially like using fresh basil. And then I'm adding in a teaspoon of baking powder and um, I've whizzed up two slices of wholemeal bread, just homemade wholemeal bread. And then we need two eggs, just slightly beaten. Those up. And then some salt and pepper, um, some grated cheese. It's actually meant to have 50 grams of feta cheese, but I haven't got any feta cheese. That, that, that doesn't matter. You can just use whatever sharp sort of cheese you have. And I'm just going to add in probably about half a cup of milk. Might need to add a little bit more. So pour that in. And I'll add my grated cheese and a little bit of parmesan and then we just mix that all together oopsie I just realized I forgot the garlic the garlic is quite important because I love that garlicky taste coming through so I'm just going to finely dice a large clove of garlic these are really lovely tasty um, little fritters that we just love to have. They're even nice if you have them left over. We sometimes will have them at breakfast time just with some scrambled eggs on the side and they're really really good. I'll just chop up that garlic and mix it in. Okay so just mix all those ingredients together and you want to have, um, you don't want it to be too dry but then you also don't want it to be too wet. And I'm just going to heat a little bit of light olive oil in the pan. I'm probably going to add the rest of that milk in there. And just start frying these up. So you can see the mixture's not runny. Flops off. I'm just going to heat a little bit of oil, probably about a good sized tablespoon in there, maybe a little bit more, and just a little bit in that smaller pan. Don't need a whole lot of oil. Just add a little, little bit of ground black pepper in. So I'm going to make not too big a spoonfuls, otherwise they take too long to cook. Probably just like a rounded dessert spoon. Into your pan. Let me crank that up just a little bit more. Oh, they smell so good and garlicky. And they taste wonderful and cheesy. So I try not to cook too many at a time. And I don't normally flip them over until they're quite browned. Might be able to put one more into that pan. Well, it's starting to sizzle now. Oh, 
Workshop sounds fantastic. I'm just finding a movie to watch. So you don't want to be too hasty in flipping these over, otherwise they'll fall apart. So that's why it's important to get the temperature just right. But I'm sure everybody's made some sort of fritter thing before, so I'm probably <laughs> talking to very experienced senior cooks here. But you never know. It could be somebody watching who doesn't do any cooking. And this is all new to them, that's why I go into a little bit of detail, just in case. And then I've just got to plate here with some um, paper towels, just ready, so I can drain them. So meanwhile, I'm just making a little salad for our dinner. So just a few little tomatoes, you've packed a bit of red pepper and, and some red onion, and that'll make a lovely little salad. I think these are just about ready to flip over. I don't want to get them burnt. There we are. Oh, that one looks good. And make sure you're wearing your apron so you don't splatter yourself with any grease. Right, so let's give these ones a wee turn. A little bit. Oh, they're going to be so good. And then I'll probably put a little bit of, um, I think most people would probably use sour cream, but I like to use Greek yogurt. So I'll put a little bit of Greek yogurt and a little bit of barbecue sauce, and I'm just going to turn that down a bit. And I think my corn on the cob is nearly ready. <coughs> Give it just a little bit longer. And I'll put the water drawer on so that um, when these are ready, I can cook the next lot. So I'm um, not quite sure exactly how long it takes all up. I just wait until they're sort of puffed up, and you can just normally tell when they're, they're ready. Maybe it's like all up about 10 minutes. So here we are, we're all ready. So we just put out as many as you think you'd like on your plate. And then I'll show you how I get them all ready. My husband will probably eat about four of these. And then if there's any left over, we might have some scrambled eggs at breakfast. And we'll have these alongside. And then we've got our corn. Put on the cob. I just put a little bit of Greek yogurt on top. And drizzle over <clears throat> a little bit of barbecue sauce. Smoky barbecue sauce. And I'll just put a little bit of butter on the side for the corn. And that is our delicious dinner. So there we have it, a simple harvest dinner. The lettuce and tomatoes are from the garden and the courgettes and herbs and the fritters are also from the garden. So this is a pretty inexpensive um, home growing vegetarian dinner that anybody could cook. I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.